Ibrahim. Today, the topic of our lecture is the gastric carcinoma. Uh, gastric carcinoma is a, a very common occurrence in the diseases of the stomach. So we call it the captains of the man of death. And it, there is a five-year survival is 5%. Gastric cancer is a curable disease if it is detected early and treated accordingly. It is rarely disseminated widely before involving the lymph nodes. So the involvement of the lymph nodes is the main reason for its widespread uh, dissemination. So the prognosis of the disease depends upon the how much the degree of lymph node, metastatic lymph node involvement is there. So the early diagnosis is the key to success. If we diagnose the gastric carcinoma in the early stages, before the dissemination into the lymph nodes, the prognosis will be good. And uh, we can cure the patient from the carcinoma of the stomach if we detect out the disease early, before its dissemination, metastatic is spread to the lymph nodes. Next. Now, Regarding the incidence of the gastric carcinoma, actually gastric carcinoma is an environmental disease. In Japan, the disease is much more common, while in China, the incidence is double that in Japan. Men are more affected than women, incidence increases with the age. Currently, marked changes are being observed in the West. Incidence of gastric cancer is continuing to fall about 1% per year. Incidence of carcinoma in the proximal stomach, especially the esophagogastric junction, is increased. In the past, the site of the common site for the gastric carcinoma was the distal stomach, means the at the antrum or the pylorus. That was common in the past because of the increased uh, incidence of the gastritis because of the acidotic disease. And later on, the H. pylori was detected out, detected out as the main causative agent, which is causing the gastritis. And that gastritis, in the pro, is, is, if it persists for a prolonged time, it will lead to the gastric carcinoma. So this was the incidence found in the very past, where the site for the gastric carcinoma of the distal stomach was common. But uh, nowadays, this trend is changing. The stomach, the proximal stomach cancer near the esophageal junction, means the esophagogastric junction is now increasing. Why? Because of the increased incidence, increased occurrence of the GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. Nowadays, the gastroesophageal reflux disease is changing. It is now, the cases of GERD are more common are more abundantly found in the West. So now that, as I have told you, the currently the marked changes are being observed in the West, because in the Western countries, GERD is more common. GERD is more found in the many people are suffering from the GERD. That's why the because of the GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, there is the reflux esophagitis. Reflux esophagitis will cause to the Barrett's esophagus. And Barrett's esophagus, as you all know, is the pre-malignant disease. The Barrett's esophagus will change, the metaplasia will change into the dysplasia, and the chances of carcinoma are increased. Increase in proximal gastric cancer are affect higher socioeconomic groups. While the distal stomach and body of the stomach carcinoma was found in the low socioeconomic group. So this is the main difference. The in poor people, the people with the low socioeconomic conditions are suffering from the carcinoma of the distal stomach. While the people with higher socioeconomic uh, families, the rich people, they are suffering more from the GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. That's why the proximal stomach cancer or cancer at the esophagogastric junction is more common in the rich people in the higher socioeconomic group of the people. So these people, these people are more in the West. So the, this cancer carcinoma of the proximal stomach is common in the Western countries, while in Asian countries, uh, the 
with people with a low socioeconomic group, the carcinoma of the lower uh, distal stomach means the body and the antrum or the pylorus is more common. This is about the, all about the incidence. Now, the etiology of the gastric carcinoma. It, uh, as you all know, the gastric carcinoma is a multifactorial disease. There are many factors which are responsible for the, this disease for its occurrence. The multifactorial disease, first of all, the H. pylori. As you all know, the H. pylori is a common, normal, common cells of the stomach. It's the normal bacteria which is living in the acidic environment of the stomach. So mainly associated with the carcinoma of the body and distal stomach. Because as you all know, the hydrochloric acid is secreted from the body and distal stomach. So the, this H. pylori lives in an acidic environment. This is a normal common cells bacteria of the stomach, which is residing, living, which is, is surviving in the acidic medium of the stomach. So the acid is more common in the distal stomach. So the H. pylori most of the time affects the distal stomach. So what are the sequences which the H. pylori causes? What the H. pylori is doing? H. pylori causes the gastritis. This gastritis, if it is persisting for a long time, it is becoming a chronic gastritis. So chronic gastritis will lead to the gastric atrophy. The stomach is atrophied. The stomach is to be there. The atrophic changes are occurring because of the distal, uh, because of the chronic gastritis. And after the gastric atrophy, there will be the intestinal metaplasia. Means the epithelium is changed. Gastric epithelium is converted into the intestinal metaplasia. Intestinal epithelium is appearing there. This intestinal metaplasia will lead to the intestinal dysplasia. As all you know, the dysplasia is a pre pregnant condition. Dysplasia will lead to the carcinoma. So this is the sequence how the H. pylori in chronic cases causes the chronic gastritis that how it will lead to the atrophy and intestinal metaplasia, dysplasia, then the carcinoma. This is the about the H. pylori. What are the other risk factors? Other risk factors are there for the carcinoma of the stomach. These are general factors. Gastric atrophy will lead to the gastric atrophy due to any other cause. Either it is due to gastritis or due to any other cause. The atrophy will lead to the all those changes uh, we have discussed in the previous slide. Then the pernicious anemia, because the pernicious anemia will also cause the gastric atrophy. And if they are the gastric polyps, gastric polyps are also the pre-malignant uh, tumors. Then there is the duodenogastric reflux. Duodenogastric reflux means the contents of the duodenum passing refluxly backward to the stomach. Normally, as you all know, the peristalsis of the GIT is from stomach to duodenum, duodenum to duodenum, then the ileum. It is all from the anal world direction. But if the flux is in the retrograde uh, 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 manner, means the contents of the duodenum are passing back into the stomach. This is called the duodenogastric reflux due to any disease, any problem. So what the cause is in duodenum, what the duodenum contains? Duodenum contains the bile and the pancreatic juice. Because the second part of the duodenum, there is a common bile duct opening. Common bile duct opening brings the bile from the gallbladder and the pancreatic juice from the pancreas. So these are accumulated in the second part of the duodenum. If there is a duodenogastric reflux, bile and pancreatic juice reflexly enter in the backward flow to into the stomach. As you all know, the bile and pancreatic juice, these are alkalis. So stomach environment is the gas uh, acidic. So first of all, this is causes the neutralization of the hydrochloric acid. But if there is a reflux is pushing a very large amount of the uh, duodenal contents, so the large amount of the bile and the pancreatic juice is refluxly passing from the duodenum into the stomach due to duodenogastric reflux. So this alkali bile and pancreatic juice will cause the alkaline gastritis. We call it a reflux gastritis. This is this gastritis is not because of the hydrochloric acid. This is because of the alkali that is the pancreatic juice and the bile. This alkaline gastritis will lead to the yeah, gastric yeah. atrophy. Then there are the same changes of the yeah, intestinal yeah. bile intestinal dysplasia, and carcinoma. Yeah, yeah. This is the same sequence. 
Then there is another cause that is the post peptic ulcer surgery. While we are doing a bilirubin two gastrectomy and making a gastrojejunal anastomosis, in these cases there are four times more risk of carcinoma because when we are making a stoma after doing the bilirubin two gastrectomy, distal gastrectomy, we making the anastomosis um, of stomach with the jejunum, the gastrojejunostomy is the site where there is the stomal ulceration because the jejunum is not so resistant to the hydrochloric acid. The hydrochloric acid burns the mucosa of the jejunum, causing the stomal ulceration. That area will lead to the in a long long term cases will convert into the carcinoma. So there is the four yeah. times more risk because of the post peptic ulcer surgery. Chances of carcinoma. The GERD. Again, the GERD gastroesophageal reflux disease is causing the calcium of the proximal proximal stomach, means at the junction of the esophagus with the proximal stomach. The GERD, what happens in the GERD? The GERD, the hydrochloric acid is burning the lower esophagus, so causing the reflux esophagitis. This reflux esophagitis will lead to the Barrett's esophagus. Barrett's esophagus is a parenteral malignant condition, then there will be the changes of dysplasia that will lead to the carcinoma. Cigarette smoking, same. Cigarette smoking will lead to the uh, metaplasia, then dysplasia, and ultimately the carcinoma. Alcohol, same. Alcohol leads to the gastritis. After gastritis, all other changes occur, as I have. Certain diets are working as the risk factors for the malignancy. The diets appear to be very important because certain diets are pre malignant. In China, the disease is environmental and diet related. Spirit may induce the gastritis, spirit or alcohol, the same. The excessive uh, salt intake, salt is also causing the gastritis, deficiency of antioxidants. So, other is the genetic, uh, genetic factors are also working as the risk factors. So this figure highlights you the site of the carcinoma, the esophagus, esophagus. The upper esophagus, the, the chances of carcinoma is 2%. At the mid esophagus, the chances of carcinoma is 6%. Lower esophagus, chances of 22%. Esophagogastric junction involves 18% of the carcinoma. The cardia, 17%. Body of the stomach involves the 15% of the carcinoma. Entrum, 13% of chances of carcinoma. Pylorus, 7%. Now you look at the proximal stomach. Proximal stomach means the lower end of the esophagus, esophagogastric junction, and the cardia. These lower esophagus is 22%, esophagogastric junction is 18%, cardia is 17%. If you will total these, the sum up is of 60% means 60% of the carcinoma is occurring in the proximal stomach. Lower end of esophagus, esophagogastric junction and cardia. This involves the 22% plus 18% plus 17% total is the 60%. While at the lower end of the stomach, you see the pylorus is 7%, antrum is the 13%. Means it is, total is 20%. The distal stomach carcinoma occurrence <coughs> is 20%. While in proximal stomach, the chances of carcinoma in the proximal stomach is 60%. So 20% means now you can uh, compare both these. So you now this is determined, this is estimated that nowadays the carcinoma of the proximal stomach is more common as compared to the distal stomach. Because distal stomach is pylorus 7%, entrum 13%, it is 20%, while the proximal stomach Lower end is 22% plus 18% plus 70% is 60%. So more chances of the uh, carcinoma of the stomach in the proximal stomach. Now the clinical features, how the patient of uh, a gastric cancer will present to you. 
the there is early gastric cancer other is the late gastric cancer the early gastric cancer how the patient of the early gastric cancer uh, presents to you because this is very important that if the patient present to us with the early gastric cancer and we treat it uh, is uh, accordingly so the chances of prognosis the survival are more because it will we can cure the disease in the early stages of the gastric carcinoma if surgery is done it is treated properly accordingly the prognosis is very good and uh, the survival rate is very good so it is a curable disease while in advanced disease it's the incurable disease so the chances of prognosis, chance, prognosis is very less so gastric cancer how you will what is the definition of the early gastric cancer early gastric cancer is defined as the cancer it is limited to the mucosa and submucosa means the carcinoma changes of the carcinoma the carcinoma disease is limited to the mucosa and submucosa it has not involved the muscle layer and the serosa because as all you know the GIT has the four layers the mucosa submucosa muscularis muscularis mucosa then there is the serosa so the four layers the two layers are involved from inside out the mucosa and submucosa but the disease had not reached up to the muscle layer and the serosa then there is a with or without the lymph node involvement means either the adjacent lymph nodes are involved or not but the disease should be limited to the mucosa and submucosa and the patient will present to you a non-specific dyspepsia there will be non-specific dyspepsia what is dyspepsia dyspepsia is a combination of certain symptoms of the upper GIT like retroesternal burning retroesternal discomfort the reflux the indigestion the flatulence the nauseating patient will feel a nauseating the flatulence these all things are uh, included in the dyspepsia so there will be non-specific symptoms of non-specific dyspepsia or you can say it's, it's like the benign dyspepsia now this early gastric cancer is a pure disease if we diagnose early accordingly the disease is a pure in japan there is a screening program so it is picked up early by the liberal use of endoscopy in patients with this system. In Japan, because in Japan the incidence of carcinoma wisdom are increased. It's a more occurrence of the carcinoma wisdom in Japan. So they have uh, formulated a screening program. They are regularly uh, doing the endoscopies in patients, those who are suffering from the benign dyspepsia even. So, and they get the biopsies. So they have early picked up the disease in the early stages. Now, the advanced, advanced gastric cancer. What is advanced gastric cancer? The cancer involves the muscular liver. The muscle layer is involved. And then the serosa, we call it advanced gastric cancer. And it is an incurable disease. And how the, what the patient will present to you? Early satiety, putting, distension, and vomiting. The patient will present with you. Sometimes this as the advanced disease, the tumor is increased in size and it is causing the uh, lumen of the stomach at the pylorus. So there will be the signs of the obstruction, like the obstruction leads to the dysphagia. If the tumor is the lower end of the esophagus and it is tumor is the advanced one and it is obstructing the lumen, the patient will complain to the dysphagia the epigastric fullness or vomiting when it is involving the lower end of the stomach at the pylorus and the growth is big one that is obstructing the lumen there will be the epigastric fullness or vomiting with the pyloric obstruction when it is obstructing the pylorus the features of gastric outlet obstruction patient present to us with the features of gastric outlet obstruction as we have discussed in the previous lecture the iron deficiency anemia due to frequent bleeding from tumor because tumor is there there will be the loss of blood uh, that will be the chronic loss of the blood so patient will develop with a chronic anemia we level it as the iron deficiency anemia other is, the, other is the trozoose sign what is the trozoose sign because of the malignancy there are certain hemolytic disorders there certain bleeding disorders so there will be the thrombophilipitis thrombophilipitis means inflammation of the veins and deep in thrombosis so the inflammation of the veins will lead to the thrombophilibitis so that will we can palpate the uh, 
uh, uh, veins that will be inflamed, swelling uh, veins. We, the sign is called the trozoo sign. And we can find out a deep venous thrombosis there in the legs. <clears throat> this is the early picture of the early gastric cancer. You can see in this picture type 1. Type 1 is a protuding. The growth is protuded. It is the protuded out. The tumor is protuded out. And type 2, you can see it is a superficial. The tumor is superficial, lying along the mucosa. No protuberation is there. Type 3, you can see it is called excavated. Excavated means it is deepening. It is ulcerating area. The ulcerating area that is the like a, a groove. You can see like a groove. This is the excavated, deepening into the mucosa. The disease is deepening into the mucosa. It is the ulcerating growth. So you can see the type 3. So these are the three types of the early gastric cancer. Uh, you can see in this picture. Other, I'm showing you, this is another picture which is showing you the advanced gastric carcinoma. As to advanced gastric carcinoma is classified by the Bormann. This is, we call it the Bormann classification of the advanced gastric cancer. Number type 1, you can see type 1 is the polypoid growth. Polypoid, it is protruded like a polyp. Like a polyp, it is from the gastric wall, it is protruding out. It is bulging out like a polypoid. So we call it a polypoid growth. It is a polypoid tumor. Then you can see in the type 2, this is the ulcerating growth. Then there is an ulcer, ulcer over the mucosa. There is the deep cavity because of the ulcer. And on the margins, you can see there is a growth. Red, red lining, that is the red lining or brown lining is the cancer, indicating the cancer. That was a polypoid. You see the red or the maroon or brown colored. It is the, huh? it is the uh, malignancy. In C type 2, you see that this is the brown uh, coloring. That is the margins of the ulcerating growth is the carcinoma. So there is an ulcer basically, ulcer in the stomach wall. This ulcerating, there the margins are swollen and it's protruded. It is converted into the malignancy. Margins are, there is the malignant growth. So we call it the ulcerating growth. Type 1 is polypoid growth. Uh, polypoid tumor of the stomach type 2 is the ulcerating growth and number 3 and 4 we level it the diffuse gastric carcinoma diffuse gastric carcinoma what is the diffuse gastric carcinoma diffuse carcin diffuse gastric carcinoma is one that infiltrates deeply into the stomach without forming without forming what is the diffuse gastric cancer it infiltrates deeply into the stomach without forming the obvious mass lesions, but it spreads widely in the gastric wall. It spreads widely in the gastric uh, gastric wall, involving almost whole of the gastric wall diffusely. It involves almost whole of the gastric wall, so we call it a diffuse gastric carcinoma. Uh, so, because it is diffusely involving whole of the gastric carcinoma, it spreads widely in the gastric wall so the prognosis is not good the prognosis of disease is very bad so this is all about the uh, early gastric cancer and the advanced gastric carcinoma the prognosis of the early ga advanced gastric carcinoma is not good and this uh, is not a curable disease while early gastric carcinoma is a curable disease. Now, spread of the gastric carcinoma. How the gastric carcinoma is spread? That is very important. Direct spread, tumor penetrates the muscularis, serosa, and ultimately the adjacent organs like the pancreas, colon, and the liver. First of all, it directly spreads into the muscle, muscle layer from the mucosa, submucosa, then into the muscle layer, and then the serosa. When it crosses the serosa, the, this carcinoma involves the adjacent organs like the pancreas, colon, and liver. Other is the lymphatic spread, both by lymphatic spread is both by permeation and emboline to the affected tires of the lymph nodes, means the adjacent lymph nodes, the 
lymph nodes supplying the um, uh, main vessels. Then there is the trozier sign. What is trozier sign? Palpable supraclavicular lymph nodes due to metastasis. Is all you know, the lymphatic spread of the carcinoma of the stomach is first to the adjacent lymph nodes that are along the wall of the stomach. Then the main lymphatic channels. What are main, main lymphatic channels which are supplying the stomach, like the left gastric artery, the right gastric vessels, gastroepiploic vessels, short gastric vessels, means the lymph nodes are lying along those vessels which are the main trunks, main uh, trunks of the vessels supplying to the stomach. So, and carcinoma of the stomach is spread to the distant lymph nodes, that is the supracalicular lymph nodes. When the supracalicular lymph nodes are involved due to metastasis, these are palpable. Supracalicular lymph node is palpable, visible and palpable. So we call it the trozier sign. When the supracalicular lymph node is visible and palpable because of the metastasis of the carcinoma stomach, we call it the trozier sign. Then there is a blood-bound metastasis. What is blood-bound? The spread malignancy, which is spread through the bloodstream. This is first to the liver and then to the other organs like lungs and bone. Transperitoneal spread is the stomach is the intraperitoneal organ lying in the peritoneal cavity. So its local of the direct spread is to the transperitoneal through the peritoneal to the adjacent structures. So common mode of the spread once the tumor has reached. It's a very common method of mode of spread of the carcinoma if the tumor has reached the zero. So if that in the early gastric cancer, tumor is confined, cancer carcinoma is confined to the mucosa or submucosa. In case of advanced, it crosses the serosa. It involves the muscle layer, then serosa. If once uh, the malignancy has reached the serosa of the stomach, oh, then it is it is spread through the peritoneal cavity. It is it spreads to the peritoneal cavity, to the omental, to the other peritoneal organs, per, uh, visceral peritoneal organs in the viscera. So it is an incurable disease. So when the spread into the peritoneal cavity occurs after crossing the serosa, then the patient will present with ascites. The advanced peritoneal disease may be palpated either abdominally or rectally. We call it a tumor shell. What happens when the spread is into the peritoneal cavity, the patient will develop the ascites. And on the abdominal examination, we can find out the tumor masses in the peritoneal cavity, which are metastatic from the carcinoma of the stomach. And when we do a DRE, digital rectal examination, when we do a per rectal examination, we can find out the tumor masses uh, on per rectal examination in uh, bulging into the rectum because these tumor uh, mosses are present in the peritoneal cavity and most dependent part of the peritoneal cavity in standing posture is the recto vesical pouch in males and pouch of Douglas in the females. So when we do a PR examination, we find out the tumor masses on PR or digital rectal examination in the rectum, bulging into the rectum, these are the hard uh, mosses. So these are beginning of the tumor masses which are lying in the rectovesical pouch in the males and the pouch of Douglas in the females. So on PR examination or digital rectal examination, DR examination, if these masses are palpable, we call it the tumor shelf. Other when the this metastasis is spreads to the ovaries. Ovaries may be involved by transylemic spread. We call it a uh, Korpenberg's tumor. Means the ovaries has got the tumor metastatic lien from the carcinoma stomach through the transperitoneal spread. We call it a Kokonberg's tumor. Tumor may spread via the abdominal cavity to the umbilicus, so we can find out a nodule in the umbilicus. This is called the Sister Joseph's nodule. The nodule will be palpable in the umbilicus. The as hard nodule will be palpable in the umbilicus. This is basically a metastatic. Uh, nodule which is spread via the peri uh, abdominal cavity to the umbilicus. So when it is, is nodule is palpable, we call it a sister Joseph's nodule. I love it there. Yes, I'm going to go back. This is the staging of the TNM classification or TNM staging of the gastric carcinoma. 
तो टी वन ट्यूमर इन्वॉल्व द लेमिना प्रोपरिया आर द सम्यूकोसा इट इज कॉल्ड द टी वन वेन द ट्यूमर इन्वॉल्व द इन्वेट द मस्क्यूलर इज आर सीरोसा इट इज टी टू टी थ्री ट्यूमर इन्वॉल्व द म्यूकोसा टी फोर ट्यूमर इन्वेट द एजेंट ऑर्गन नो नो लिफ्ट नोट इज मेटास्टेसिस एन वन देन द मेटास्टेस द पेरी गेस्ट्रिक नोट्स लिम्फ नोट्स मीन्स पेरी गेस्ट्रिक मीन्स एजेसेंट बिल्कुल along the walls of the stomach then n2 metastasis in the nodules along the main arterial trunks perigastric nodes n1 means the along the uh, gastric wall and metastasis in the nodules along with the main arterial trunks is the n2 what are main arterial trunks which are supplying the stomach is the right gastric vessels the left gastric vessels the short gastric vessel gastroepiphytic vessels mo means no distant metastasis m1 distant metastasis so by this staging you can find out making out the staging of the disease tnm staging uh, 1a t1 n0 m0 1b t1 n1 mo like that stage 2 stage 3a 3b 4 stage 5 this this is all the staging of the gastric cancer as per tnm classification Okay. Now this is the surgery of gastric cancer. The gastric cancer is we have already divided into the uh, two categories. One is the early gastric cancer, other is the advanced gastric cancer. So in early gastric cancer, the if it is diagnosed early, uh, then the surgery has a very good role. surgery has got the curative role the disease becomes curable in the early gastric cancer if it is detected early the disease is confined to the mucosa and submucosa and we do a surgery so that this radical surgery will cause a permanent cure so this surgery when it is done on the uh, early gastric cancer we call it a curative surgery because it will cure the disease completely while in case of advanced disease and if the cancer is advanced advanced stage is we have detected out we have diagnosed the disease at the advanced stage then the if surgery has a very little role so at that stage we are not in a position to do a radical surgery or curative surgery the surgery which cure the disease so at that stage we have to do the palliative surgery means to relieve the symptoms to make the life of the patient comfortable but we cannot cure the disease the carcinoma we cannot uh, cure the carcinoma so surgery may be curative radical or palliative so when we call it into the curative surgery when we do it in the early stages when the disease is diagnosed at the early stages means early gastric carcinoma we will do a surgery that will be curative surgery because at this stage the disease is curable but when there is the metastasis disease is spread from the serosa to the adjacent peritoneal structures or to the distant uh, uh, organs and lymph node involvements are more even we do a surgery we cannot cure the disease so at that stage the better decision is to give a palliation palliation to do the palliative surgery uh, to the patient to uh, relieve the symptoms to give uh, make the life comfortable for the patient so surgery is in malignancy in carcinoma surgery is two types curative surgery other is the palliative surgery so here in the carcinoma stomach we will go for the curative surgery radical surgery or palliative surgery the curative surgery we can do a total gastrectomy when we find out that whole of the stomach is involved we remove whole of the stomach this is called total gastrectomy other is the subtotal gastrectomy when we detect out the disease in involving the lower stomach lower stomach the distal stomach we do the bilirubin one gastrectomy or bilirubin two gastrectomy and other is the palliative surgery when the disease is in advanced stage so no role of curative or the radical surgery so then do we do a palliative surgery to relieve the symptom if the disease If the tumor is at the pylorus and it is causing the pyloric obstruction, so the we have to give the passage to the foot. So we make a bypass procedure. What is the that bypass procedure? We go, do a gastrojejunostomy. We make the anastomosis of the body or the proximal stomach with the jejuna. 
means bypassing the food from the esophagus. Food will then enter from the esophagus into the stomach and then from stomach to the duodenum, bypassing the duodenum because pylorus is obstructed. Pylorus is blocked because of the milk growth. Other is the gastric esculion and esophageal duodenostomy. Means we make the duodenum anastomosis with the esophagus and we exclude the gastric stomach. The stomach remains at their own site because tumor is involved in the whole of the stomach and tumor is uh, invaded the body of the stomach even. So we cannot, we are not in a position to do the gastro duodenostomy. So in that stage, we make an anastomosis of the duodenum with the esophagus, bypassing the stomach. Means gastric exclusion. We exclude the stomach. We bypass the stomach. The stomach uh, is there, but we bypass the stomach. We make the duodenum. We connect the duodenum with the esophagus. The food will pass from esophagus to the duodenum. Other is the if. We are not in a position to do these procedures, then we do the palliative intubation or stenting. We put a stent or put a tube into the esophagus if the growth is involving the lower end of the esophagus or the proximal stomach for inoperable tumors of the cardia. We put a tube or a stent through the esophagus into the stomach to allow the food to pass from the esophagus to the stomach. This is one form of the palliation. Now this diagram, this diagram is for the distal gastrectomy. In case of carcinoma of distal stomach, here you see what we have did. We have removed the distal portion of the stomach. That is the antrum and the pylorus because the carcinoma is involving the pylorus. So we have removed the pylorus and the antrum of the stomach and we have closed the first part of duodenum. This is the distal stomach is resected. First part of duodenum is closed because we removed the pylorus and the antrum of the stomach because the growth was there, carcinoma was there. So body of stomach and the proximal stomach is there. So now we have make a gastro duodenostomy, make the anastomosis of the duodenum with the stomach. So distal stomach is removed. This was the operation which was done in 1818 by the Billroth. Billroth was a surgeon. It is called the Billroth 2 operation. Now in other diagram, I'll show you this is the same Billroth 2 operation. Distal gastrectomy is done. Distal stomach is removed. Duodenum is closed. First part of duodenum is closed. And we make a gastro means the anastomosis of the duodenum with the stomach to allow the passage of the foot from the stomach into the duodenum directly because the distal stomach is removed and stomach is closed at the body. Okay. And another is the Billroth 1 operation which was done in the past. Before the Billroth 2, the Billroth was doing the Billroth 1 operation. But later on, the Billroth 1 operation was not found to be the good operation. That's why uh, the Billroth then abandoned this operation and then started the Billroth 2 operation. Billroth 2 basically is the modification of the Billroth 1. In Billroth 1, what he was doing, he was removing the distal stomach, antrum and pylorus, but making the anastomosis of the stomach with the first part of the Here he is making the anastomosis of the stomach with the first part of the after removing the antrum and pylorus and not making the gastro -gigenostomy. But later on, it was found that the anastomosis of the stomach, the duodenum, was not a good anastomosis. Most of the time, this anastomosis is the ch more chances of leakage, more chances of leakage and other complications. That's why later on, the Billroth has modified this Billroth 1 operation to the Billroth 2 operation because the gastro duodenostomy, duodenum is a thick walled, highly vascular organ. It's Anastomosis of the stomach with the duodenum has got the good results, less chances of leakage, while in case of duodenum, anastomosis of duodenum with the stomach has the more chances of leakage, and sometimes the duodenum is distorted because of the growth. So very difficult to do the anastomosis in some cases of difficult duodenum. This is the picture of the total gastrectomy. Whole of the stomach, you see the whole stomach is removed. All the stomach is removed and resected out because in cases of diffused gastric carcinoma, advanced gastric carcinoma, diffused gastric carcinoma, or carcinoma involving the whole of the stomach, the whole of the stomach is removed 
and duodenum is closed at its first part. Duodenum is closed at its first part. Jejunum limb is uh, uh, got out, and that limb is anastomosed with the lower end of the esophagus. The esophageal jejunostomy was done. So the food is passing from the esophagus directly into the jejunum, where it below the jejunum is connected with the jejunum. We call it the intero enterostomy. Means jejuno jejunostomy is formed lower down. Well, this is called the roux and y anastomosis. It is, you see, it is like, like a Y. The one loop of the jejunum is going up to make the anastomosis with the esophagus. Other loop of the jejunum is making the anastomosis with the jejunum. So making the intero enterostomy below. Intero enterostomy means intestine anastomosis with the intestine, small intestine. Means the jejunum anastomosis with the jejunum. This is called the jejuno jejunostomy. So upper you see, you saw, there are the, you can see there are the two limbs of the Y. One limb of the Y is going to anastomosis of the esophagus. Other limb of the Y is making to anastomosis of the jejunum and going passing to the third part of the duodenum. And vertical limb of the Y is coming down, that is the jejunum, so making a shape of a Y. So we say it a uh, ruined Y anastomosis. This ruined by anastomosis has got the very good results. It is better than the loop eugenostomy. Now, what is radical uh, gastrectomy? The spleen and the distal pancreas in black are removed along with the stomach. We call it a, a radical gastrectomy. Means that when we call it a radical gastrectomy, when we spleen, the distal pancreas along with the stomach are removed. We call it a radical gastrectomy. Japanese basically has uh, done the lymph node dissection. They depend more upon the lymph node dissection uh, to make the disease more curable because the metastasis of the gastric carcinoma are first beginning to the lymph nodes, the adjacent lymph nodes and the lymph nodes over the trunks, main trunks. So the Japanese were interested to make the more radical uh, gastrectomy by doing the dissection of the lymph nodes. So the Japanese do the D2 gastrectomy. So what is the D2 gastrectomy? Will D2 gastrectomy will commonly preserve the spleen and pancreas. And radical gastrectomy, what is the doing in radical gastrectomy? We remove the spleen and distract the pancreas along with the stomach, we call it a radical gastrectomy. While the Japanese was doing the D2 gastrectomy because they know that D2 gastrectomy has got the very good results, they, they will commonly preserve the spleen and pancreas. And what is the difference between D2, D1 gastrectomy and D2 gastrectomy? This D is for the lymph nodes. Now D1 gastrectomy involves the removal of perigastric nodes. Perigastric nodes means which are lying along the along with the wall of the stomach. If the along with the stomach, all the lymph nodes which are lying along the wall of the stomach are removed, we do call it a D1 gastrectomy. What is D2 gastrectomy? D2 gastrectomy involves the clearance of the major arterial trunks like the right gastric, left gastric, and gastric vessels. Means when they, the, the lymph nodes are removed along with the stomach to the distant lymph nodes which are lying with the major arterial trunks, the major arterial trunks which are supplying the stomach like the right gastric, left gastric and gastroepidemic vessels. The lymph nodes which are lying along the major arterial trunks like right gastric artery, left gastric vessels and gastroepidemic vessels, they are removed along with the stomach space when this is called a D2 gastrectomy. So D2 gastrectomy, mostly the Japanese were doing the D2 gastrectomy, means they will preserve the spleen and pancreas, not removing the spleen and pancreas like in radical gastrectomy. And what do they, they do the lymph node clearance. They remove the lymph nodes, which are supplying to the stomach. And these are the distant lymph nodes, which are not lying along the, only along the stomach walls, but lying over the major arterial trunks, which are supplying to the, uh, stomach, like the right gastric, left gastric, gastroepiplac vessels. So we call it a D2 gastrectomy. The Japanese were mostly doing the D2 gastrectomy, and they were got they have got a very good results uh, about uh, uh, that uh, D2 gastrectomy. So before uh, deciding about the type of a surgery, uh, the section of the stomach, 
we have to detect out the operability. We have to detect out the operability. First, we have to go for the CT scan uh, of the stomach. We have to go for the CT scan of the stomach. The, the intraluminal uh, ultrasound is important to do the helpful for the gastric. Because as you all know, the investigations of the carcinoma stomach are very simple. We got a barium meal x-ray. After that, we have go for the endoscopy. Through endoscopy, we get the multiple biopsies. At least 10 biopsies are required from different sites. Multiple biopsies we get, and biopsy will tell us that it's the malignancy. Then for staging purpose, we have to go through for the CT scan uh, of the stomach, the intraluminal uh, or endoscopic ultrasound, which will help us in the staging of the disease. So the CT scan and the intraluminal ultrasound and ultimately the diagnostic laparoscopy will tell us about the staging of the disease. The disease is how much is spread. Either it is the early gastric cancer or the advanced gastric cancer. If it is spread to the whole of the peritoneal cavity, to the ovaries, to the other uh, organs of the peritoneal cavity, to the liver, then the, uh, it is labeled as the advanced gastric carcinoma and it is an uh, incurable disease. The surgery will not give the, any benefit. At that stage, we have to go for the palliation to relieve the symptoms, to allow the patient to take the meals, the food. So first of all, even in uh, um, surgery, we decide that it is an operable tumor or inoperable tumor. Two things are there, incurable disease, incurable disease. Other thing is the tumor is operable or inoperable means we can resect out the tumor easily or it is very difficult to resect out the tumor means it is operable or inoperable so first of all we have to decide about the operability of the disease so it is important that the patients whose incurable disease are not subject to radical surgery that cannot help them so evidence of incurability the what are the evidences we can find out during surgery the disease is incurable the disease evidence of incurability, the disease is incurable. These are the evidences that is there is the hematogenous spread, involvement of the distant distant peritoneum, N2 nodal disease, disease beyond the N4 nodal, and fixation of the tumor to the adjacent structures. Means the carcinoma of the stomach. This tumor is adherent to the pancreas, to the adjacent other structures, colon. So that cannot be removed. And while the operability includes include the, when we say that there is an operability, includes the N3 nodal involvement, involvement of the adjacent peritoneum, curative resection should be considered on the, we can see, uh, depend upon the uh, condition of the patient. The tumor is uh, fixed, or how much the lymph nodes are involved, how much the distant metastasis is there. So this will all the factors which will decide about the operability or inoperability of the tumor. So this is all about uh, today's lecture of the gastric carcinoma. Now I will offer you the, any questions, any queries, any difficulties you have regarding this topic. You can ask yes, the question.